Christ is in our midst. So today is, uh, as you may know, is the first uh, sort of kickoff Sunday for our stewardship uh, 2023, for our next year's uh, stewardship program. And I, I wanted, I, I thought I would open today and this the kickoff of our stewardship with sort of a kind of a macro picture of, of how we might understand stewardship. So I guess I would say what I want to show you is how we can understand good stewardship and how we can understand bad stewardship. And I'm going to give you an image. I have my tools here in front of me and I'm going to give you an image. But first I want to make a distinction. And the distinction is, and you probably kind of know this, maybe you've heard it. Um, the distinction is between what is important and what is urgent, right? So, what is important? An example of something that's important, well, a good example for us today might be getting into the kingdom of heaven, right? Getting into the kingdom of heaven. Raise your hand if getting into the kingdom of heaven is important to you. Come on, you. Don't be shy. There you go. Some of you don't want to get in. What's going on? Um, so that's important, right? But is it urgent? Are, are the things we need to do to get into the kingdom of heaven, are they urgent? We're going to talk about that more in a second. But what is urgent? What is a good example of urgent? Now, urgent things can be important. But many of the things in our lives are urgent and not important. I'll give you the perfect example. I'm going to pick on technology, right? Our phone. How many of you have multiple um, notifications on your phone? You get a notification. I, I have a Word of the Day app. I get a notification for that. You get a notification for texts. Somebody was telling me they get a notification when something goes up on Facebook. All of these notifications. They kind of, and the, I guess what I would say about things that are urgent is that they sort of, they scream to get our attention. That is the definition of something urgent. It, it, it yells at us and says, look at me. That's what is urgent, right? What is important is a little different, right? Getting into the kingdom of heaven, I said, is an example. But what is important in our lives are the things that lead to where we ultimately want to go, right? To use a more simple example, let's say we want to make a million dollars, right? Well, going to work, doing a good job, investing wisely, not spending too much money, all of those things are important. Now, they may not be urgent, right? But they are important. And so what I want to do today is I want to look at stewardship from that, that paradigm of important and urgent. And I want to use a couple of images. Here you see some, this is a bag of white beans that was in my kitchen last night. I opened it up. And these are some golf balls, right? But they represent something else, right? So the beans, the beans represent the urgent, right? The things that press on you, the ringing phone, uh, the e you walk in from work after a week of vacation and you've got 200 emails. Some are important, but many aren't, let's be honest, right? These are all the things that sort of are screaming at you for your attention. They may not be important, but they're definitely urgent, right? And this is my day, right? So this is my day, right? So oftentimes myself, I do this, right? Oftentimes I get up in the morning and all of a sudden life is sort of screaming at me, right? And so I do all of the urgent things, right? I do all of, they're falling all over the place. I do all the urgent things. I, I check my phone, I, I look at Facebook, I look at my news feed, I make sure there's no texts. You know, I look and see what my appointments are that day. All of these things that are pressing, right? And so that's what happens, right? I fill up my day with all the pressing things, right? But then, and this is the important part, right? What about all the important, not urgent things, right? Because there's a lot of things in life, a lot of things. I would say most of the spiritual life is important, but not urgent. And let me give you some examples. So let's say, back to my day, right? I got up, I take care of all the urgent things. And then I say, oh my gosh, you know, um, I gotta say my prayers. Prayers, prayers, kind of small, you probably can't read it, it says prayers. All right, so I'm able to get my prayers in, right? I'm able to do that. And then I think to myself, you know, I really should do some reading of Scripture. Right? I do my spiritual reading, so I stick that in. All right. 
And then I think, oh my gosh, you know, I haven't gone to confession in a long time. And I had a note. I was going to call Father and make an appointment for confession. Right? So I get that in there, right? If you can't make it fit, you force it, right? Isn't that life? All right, then I, then it's, I realize, oh my gosh, it's Sunday. I have to go to liturgy, right? Uh-oh. Not working too well. And then, well, we're out of time here at this point. But then I think to myself, I'm never going to have a chance to be a Sunday school teacher or serve in some way, right? Or, or, or maybe help in the fish fry or help in some way to serve my neighbor, right? So forget about that. There's no room in there. Oh, oh look at that. And then I think, oh, but before I go to church, I have to write my stewardship check, right? So I want to give. I have to support the church, right? So all of these things, what, what am I showing you here? What I'm showing you is that all of the things that really matter aren't getting done, right? And they're not getting done. I'm not being a good steward of God's gifts to me, right? I'm not being a good, because what is a steward? A steward is someone who manages the time and the talents and the treasure of someone else, right? But if I'm not doing the most important things, am I a good steward? I think the answer is obvious, right? So let me... Let me reconstruct this for you. Let's take, a, like, let's take it from a different angle, all right? So let's say, uh -oh. let's say today I go home and I'm like, you know what? All those stupid notifications on my phone, I'm turning every one of them off. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put my cell phone, I'm gonna buy an alarm clock. Most of us probably use our cell phone as our alarm clock, right? which is dangerous because then you pick it up and then you're sucked right in, right? But I'm gonna get a real alarm clock and I'm gonna leave my cell phone in the trunk of my car tonight right? And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up, and instead of all the, the hubbub that screams for my attention, but isn't necessarily leading me into the kingdom of heaven, I'm going to get up and I'm going to say, I'm going to say my prayers. First thing, I'm going to get, wait, what did I just do? That was wrong. That goes here. Too many moving parts. So I'm going to get up and I'm going to say my prayers. That's what I'm going to do. First thing, I'm going to get up, I'm going to say my prayers. And then, I'm going to grab my Bible and the saint's life I'm reading, and I'm going to spend some time reading that, right? And then I am uh, going to, I'm going to write my stewardship check, right? I'm going to get up in the morning and write my stewardship check before I go to liturgy. Okay, so I'm going to go to liturgy. And then I'm going to, when I'm at church, after church, I'm going to, I'm going to tell Father that I, I was hoping he would let me teach Sunday school, so I'm going to serve a little bit. And I'm also going to grab Father and say, hey, Father, can we set up an appointment for confession? And I'm going to get that in the books, right? Now what happens, right? I think we all know, right? This, this brothers and sisters, is good stewardship, right? Because all the other stuff gets done, right? It gets done. It'll all fit. You'll see, I think, right? But the things that matter less are not held hostage to the things that matter more, right? And so that, brothers and sisters, is my lesson for you today. May we, may we not allow, someone once said, the tyranny of the urgent, right? May we not allow the tyranny of the urgent to separate us from God, who is ultimately our, the source of all of our life and joy and all of the good things we have. Amen.